Hello all and welcome to Law One Gaming and here comes another episode of Combat Theory. Today we're going to take a look at the common stolen decks, that is Cloud Lightning, Energy Siphon, and Mining Lasers, to see how they compare to standard weapons and in which situations, if any, they perform best. So let's get started by rolling that intro. Law One Gaming here to remind you of my 30 days of giveaway. That's right, for 30 days I'm giving out Steam gift cards. To qualify for a chance to get one, all you gotta do is like, comment, and subscribe. For more details, check out my announcement video in the description below. And without further ado, on with the show. We'll go ahead and begin with the Energy Siphon. First, the Energy Siphon is most similar to the Disruptor line of weapons given its high damage to shields but relatively low raw damage. As such, we can compare it to the three levels of Disruptors. From the stats, we can see that Energy Siphon is tied with the Mark III Disruptor in terms of raw damage, has the same cooldown and range as all other Disruptors, has lower accuracy and tracking, and has a lower bonus against shield damage, dealing 150% extra damage rather than 200%. Since this weapon's primary target is shields, I multiplied the bonus to the average damage to compare the average shield damage, and from this we can see the Energy Siphon is roughly equal to a 1.5 level Disruptor, beating out the first level, being a little less effective than the Mark II, and clearly underperforming against the Mark III. However, the Energy Siphon has another major drawback. It can only be used in small weapon slots, which obviously limits the build flexibility of this weapon. Given the limited functionality of Energy Siphons and limited flexibility, it should be easy to compare the Disruptors. As such, I set up a test where 20 Energy Siphon Corvettes fought 20 Disruptor Corvettes of each level, using the ship layouts. I ran the test 10 times. Against the Mark I Disruptor, the Energy Siphon won all but one trial, with roughly 30% fleet strength remaining where it won. Against the Mark II Disruptor, the Energy Siphon lost each trial, and in each case the Mark II Disruptor had roughly 40% of fleet strength remaining on average. And lastly, against the Mark III Disruptor, it should come as no surprise that the Energy Siphon lost all trials by an even greater margin. Based on the stat comparisons and trials, it seems safe to say that Energy Siphon performs roughly as well as a 1.5 Disruptor. Therefore, its optimal use would be in the early game, if at all, and only if you find yourself unable to deal with enemy shields. In which case, this may be only viable if you have lasers at your starting weapon, and end up in an early game war against an enemy with tough shields. The Energy Siphon is also further limited by the fact that it's only available on small mounts. As such, given the limited performance, limited functionality, and limited flexibility of this tech, I'd recommend on passing an Energy Siphon in most cases. Next, we'll take a look at Cloud Lightning. The best way to describe this weapon is as the little brother of Arc Meters, because both have 100% accuracy and tracking, and both do damage as low as 1. However, Cloud Lightning has a negative damage modifier to shields, and only ignores half armor unlike its big brother that ignores both. As such, it's hard to find a direct comparison for Cloud Lightning, but I think the most apt would be Plasma Caster Weapon Line, as it has the most similar modifiers, but trades higher damage for lower accuracy and tracking. So we'll go into the trials and see how they compare. Here I'll equip destroyers with the respective weapons and Mark III disruptors to help deal with shields and limit the damage done to the hull. I'll run 10 trials of 20 out of 20 combat with the Lightning facing off against the Plasma Casters. And in the very first trial against the Mark I Plasma Casters, the Cloud Lightning loses every single time, with the Plasma Caster fleet keeping well over 50% of its fleet strength. Consequently, it doesn't seem worthwhile to test Cloud Lightning against Plasma Casters Mark II and III, since we can expect an even worse defeat. Thus, we can clearly see in a direct fight, Cloud Lightning fails to Plasma Casters. But given the difference in accuracy and tracking, it may be that Cloud Lightning performs better against high evasion targets like Corvettes. So we'll run another set of trials with Cloud Lightning against Plasma Casters, only this time instead of fighting against each other, they'll be hunting down 30 Corvettes with this build. Against Plasma Casters Mark I, Cloud Lightning killed the Corvettes with roughly 80% fleet strength remaining, and killed much quicker while Plasma Casters had roughly 50% fleet strength remaining on average. Against Plasma Casters Mark II, Cloud Lightning again killed the Corvettes faster, and with roughly 20-30% to more fleet strength remaining on average. Lastly, against Plasma Casters Mark III, Cloud Lightning again killed only slightly faster, and the difference in remaining fleet strength was only roughly 10-20% to on average. As such, against Corvettes, Cloud Lightning outperforms Plasma Casters overall. 
However, even though we know Cloud Lightning beats Plasma Casters when it comes to hunting Corvettes, we still need to do a quick comparison against other potential Corvette killers, namely missiles, cannons, and autocannons. For this, I'll be running a series of five trials with roughly the same setup as before, testing the highest tier, mid tier, and lowest tier of each of the aforementioned weapons. At the highest tier, the best performers from first to last were missiles, autocannons, cannons, and then cloud lighting. At mid tier, which is Mark II autocannon and Mark III missile and cannon, the same pattern emerged, going missiles, autocannons, cannons, and lastly cloud lightning. At bottom tier, Mark I autocannon, Mark I missile, and Mark I cannon, missiles and autocannons performed almost exactly the same, and then cannons and cloud lightning were tied just behind them with roughly the same performance between the two of them. As such, Cloud Lightning certainly isn't the best weapon available for Corvettes. Therefore, based on our testing and stat overview, it's pretty clear that Cloud Lightning has a very limited role. Against any target larger than Destroyer, you're going to want to use Plasma Casters over Cloud Lightning. And against Corvettes, Cloud Lightning is not the best choice. As such, Cloud Lightning isn't terribly effective at any point in the game. In the early game, against smaller targets, you have better choices for weapons, and by mid-game, you can use Plasma Casters instead. Consequently, I'm going to recommend passing on Cloud Lightning Overall. Its applications are far too limited, and its ideal target, an enemy with high armor and high evasion, simply doesn't exist. Finally, we come to mining lasers. Unlike cloud lightning, which was difficult to classify, mining lasers are easily comparable to, well, lasers. And a quick analysis of the stats show us that mining lasers sacrifice damage and a little bit of accuracy to get a huge buff against enemy armor, where it completely ignores armor. We can also compare the average DPS of lasers against shields and see that mining lasers fall a bit below Mark III lasers in regards to shield damage, even with lasers having a damage penalty to shield. As such, it seems like the first test we'll want to run is one where we compare mining lasers to lasers against an ideal mining laser target, because if the mining lasers underperform, we'll know not to use them. For this, I'll use a trial with cruisers, which have relatively high armor and a bounty of medium weapon slots. For these trials, we'll use the following builds and see how mining lasers compete against normal lasers in a head-to-head -head combat. And since we know our target, we can also quickly figure out the armor DPS based on the stats, where we see mining lasers come out on top just barely edging out Mark V lasers. However, we can still expect Mark V lasers to outperform mining lasers because while they may be roughly equal on armor DPS, mining lasers fall short on shield DPS. For this, I did a rough estimate of total DPS, where roughly a third of the DPS needed to kill shields and two thirds needed to kill armor. Again, this isn't a super scientific calculation, it's merely a rough estimate of the sort of damage I expect the lasers must overcome. And for the other lasers, from our comparisons, we can expect mining lasers to just edge out Mark III lasers and easily beat Mark I lasers. Just as before, we'll start with the highest tier laser for our comparison, and we'll run 10 trials of 20 on 20 combat. In our first trial with mining lasers against Mark V lasers, we can see that mining lasers put up a pretty good fight, but still consistently lose in each trial. But they leave the Mark V laser fleet with roughly 25 remaining fleet strength. Next, against Mark III lasers, we see mining lasers rather consistently edging out Mark III lasers and winning with roughly 25% remaining fleet strength on average. However, there was one trial where the Mark III lasers won with about 5% remaining fleet strength. Finally, against the Mark I lasers, it should come as no surprise that the mining lasers were able to easily win with roughly 40% remaining fleet strength. As such, it seems like mining lasers have a place, possibly even towards the late game. They are the preferred weapon when it comes to heavily armored targets with little to no shields, making them great against starports, forts, and maybe even battleships, but they're edged out by Mark V laners when it comes to cruisers at least, and possibly heavily shielded battleships as well as more evasive targets with light armor. Given all of this, I'd recommend mining lasers as a viable mid-game weapon to the point where they could replace Mark III lasers, could be an etiquette replacement for Mark IV lasers, but will likely need to be phased out by the time you reach Mark V laser. As such, I'd recommend picking up mining lasers, especially if you start without energy weapons for your civilization choice. And with all of that, I'm done for today. As always, if you feel like I've overlooked something or want me to look into a different topic, let me know in the comments below. Otherwise, I'll see you next time, Space Cowboys. Enjoy the video? Well, hey, you should consider subscribing, or maybe checking out some of these other videos. Or, hey, why don't you leave a like? It'll help the channel grow. Or, you can leave me a comment, maybe give me an idea for another video. Anyway, I'll see you next time.